Hello and welcome to episode three of the Microsoft Spotlight podcast with me, John Jarvis, and my co-host, Andrew Price. This episode is proudly sponsored by BitTitan. Check out their website today to find out how BitTitan can help your migration um, with your data to the Microsoft Cloud. So, Andrew, would you like to introduce our guest today? So, we're glad to welcome our first guest from outside the UK today, Karina Linz. She works for a partner based in Germany where she's the only female within her team. So without further ado, hello, Karina. Hello, Andrew, and hello, John. And thank you for inviting me in your podcast. That's no problem. No problem, Karina. So do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, Karina, before mm -hmm. we dive into all your background? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. So um, yeah, I'm Karina. Um, I'm working as a modern workplace consultant um, at MSG Services. It's a consulting company in Germany. So um, yeah, I'm also from Germany. And so now I'm working for more than uh, eight years in the consulting area. Um, so I've passed different steps in my career. I've started with um, SharePoint on-premises, like many of us in this community. And I moved in the past years to different um, topics around the modern workplace. Um, yeah, I still love SharePoint uh, and I'm still working with SharePoint online, building up portals and stuff like this, but more in the combination with all the other tools around the M365 area. And I say, as, as I touched on the last call with um, our previous guest, you know, she came from a SharePoint background as well. And they say, you love SharePoint. I hate SharePoint. <laughs> I've had nothing but headaches with it this week with my job role. So it's something that I try and avoid like the plague. But, you know, it's, it's obviously, you know, you, you've come from that background. It's good that you've got a passion for the, the technology that you started with. So mine was Link. So obviously yours is obviously SharePoint. Um, obviously, you just touched on you've been um, working within the Microsoft uh, space for eight years. But how long have you been with your current company? So I've been working now for um, about three years in my current company. And uh, so since I'm working here, I'm just working with uh, around cloud topics. So only in Microsoft 365 and no more SharePoint on-premises. <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> Yeah, that's always a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> I don't think I, I think um, probably eighty percent of the um, of the IT world do not like SharePoint on premise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe only some uh, SharePoint administrators that still love their job. <laughs> so, um, so in your like day to day role at the moment, then, so what what are you currently doing? What are you currently working on? So currently, I'm um, to be honest, I'm working on different uh, topics. So of course, last year because of COVID, um, everyone moved to uh, Teams to M365. But yeah, with focus on Teams because uh, companies needed some tools to collaborate. So the focus was also on Teams um, driving adoption and uh, yeah, making some emergency plans for adapting uh, the tool. Um, but also um, topics like uh, cultural change um, in companies in combination with the technical aspect because um, it's not enough to just uh, talk about the cultural change. It's also very important to understand uh, the technical background and also um, to give uh, guidance to employees um, about the technical uh, background. Um, okay. I mean, so what's it like, obviously, in Germany? Obviously, me and John are based in the UK. Obviously, we can see what we can explain how our customers are looking at moving to the cloud and been very change adverse in the past and now obviously being very much forced to, you know, use Microsoft Teams and go to a, a more cloud working. I mean, before um, John interviewed me for a job for his role, um, I interviewed for a particular company and they wanted me in the office every single day. They didn't they didn't believe in my home working, but literally two months later, COVID happened and you know, everyone's forced to work from home. So yeah. what, what's, that, what's that like being in Germany? Um, so I've been working also before a lot from home because um, <clears throat> I'm having customers um, in, the, in the whole country. So I was also traveling um, sometimes, not always. So it, it hasn't changed so much. It, it's just changed that I cannot see physically my colleagues because normally I was seeing them every one or two or three months. And now um, 
in the last year, so in the last 12 months, I had um, one customer appointment um, in, yeah, in the customer's office. So it was a wow for me. So that was a workshop and um, everything else is working online. But I also have to say that, so um, I'm, I'm in a team with uh, 16 people or 16 guys, and um, we didn't knew each other before. So we're, it's, a, it's a new team built also last year, um, and it really worked well, uh, the team building, although uh, we were just meeting online. So the, yeah, the work was really good in this team. I think that's something that Microsoft um, focused on their um, keynotes last week at night was um about the collaboration and new teams forming in this in this period and how well uh, microsoft teams has managed to um, enable that unusual collaboration as as you could probably say or unusual team startups so good to see it happening and um, and how technology can really change the change the world in such a in such a bad time for for everybody um so you said you mentioned you're you're, you're the only the only only female in your team kind of how was how was kind of that how was that kind of working out for you um, within with what's your experiences um, being the only female within within a large male or oriented team? Um, so I was already used to that um, <laughs> when I started my first job because there were um, all the companies I've been working for were IT companies, so it was the same also in the companies before. Um, yeah, so at the beginning, I was also uh, yeah, a couple of years younger. It was really strange for me uh, to be in a meeting with seven, eight guys talking about technical topics. It was really a little bit strange, but uh, now it feels normal. And of course, um, yeah, I'm... Uh, it's it's sometimes it's a little bit sad that there are so there are, are very much female um, tech leaders and uh, developers and yeah so i think so how, yeah. how, how did you kind of get started in in, in the career then kind what, what what made you want to get into into it so to be honest i at the beginning i didn't want to get into it <laughs> so my my mother started studied informatics and she she also had a company uh, she she developed um different um programs for customers and I, I always said okay that's so boring I, I don't want to do that and then uh, someone told me okay there is um you maybe you could study media informatics it's much nicer and easier because it has this media part and then I yeah. said okay yeah I I could try to do this I wanted to 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 go into marketing but I said okay let, let's give it a try and yeah, so I started to to study media informatics, and it was, I think, twenty percent media and eighty percent uh, informatics. Okay. So it was almost the informatics study. Um, so for those that don't know what informatics is, you want to explain a little bit about what that is? Um, so it starts with a lot, a lot of mathematics. So there are a lot of mathematics courses in the informatics study, and uh, then you. Um, Step by step, you start to focus on um, programming languages, on algorithms, and uh, also IT security topics. So, yeah. Um, so everything around IT, and with the media part, you just focus a little bit more on web development, uh, video production. Um, so everything around media. Not the same very much. There's like links. Which basically took you into the the SharePoint world there, definitely. So, how did you go from uh, media informatics to um, sh to SharePoint? So um, it wasn't planned like that. Um, first, I wanted to go into research, um, and it wasn't uh, kind of easy to get a job into media informatics research. So then I've decided, okay, um, I will apply for a consulting company because I can learn different things and see different things. So um, yeah, at my uh, first job, my interviewer just uh, told me that he's searching for a, a SharePoint consultant. Um, and he asked me if, if I know what it is. And of course I've said, no, I have no idea what is SharePoint. Um, yeah, and Even he- Even what, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, yeah, and then um, two weeks later, I had a second interview. So in this time, I had time to, to read about SharePoint. And um, yeah, it was uh, 
I don't know, overwhelming. Um, SharePoint is a content management system and it's a document management system and it's it's everything. So I even didn't knew what it is, but yeah, I just knew that it's everything. <laughs> so yeah, that, that was the beginning uh, with SharePoint. So. And obviously you've mentioned obviously that, um, you know, SharePoint is your passion, it's your love. And I know that you basically started attending a SharePoint user group about five years ago. Um, yes, so I've started to, to attend the SharePoint uh, user group in Munich because I wanted to learn more uh, about SharePoint. And um, then the, the host of the user groups um, just asked me um, to that time if I want to co-host the meetup because he's alone and he don't want to do that alone. And I said, OK, um, let's do this. Um, and I think a couple of months later, he told me, okay, she, uh, he don't want to uh, focus anymore in his career on SharePoint. He moved to other products. So then he asked me if I want to um, run that uh, meetup alone. And I've said, okay, why not? So I've continued um, to run that meetup that took place every two months locally on different consulting companies. So every time in another place. So we also had always a sponsor for beer and sandwiches and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and since last year, uh, since uh, COVID, um, the, the meetup is running online. So I just wanted to start with a couple of um, meetings online and then switch again back to offsite. To um, offsite. Um, yeah, but it's not possible anymore. So it's still online. I mean, what we'll do, obviously, we'll share a link out to your, your meetup. But um, from a demographic perspective, when you started attending the user group, how many females were coming yes. along? I was the only one. And sometimes, but really sometimes, there were one or two uh, female attendees that, that just wanted to see what we are talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, say when I run my user group um, back in the very early days, again, it was just one or two female attendees, but they're more from a, a recruitment background. So I think they're kind of there for like, you know, basically fishing for CVs. Um, there wasn't many women from a technical background attending. So, you know, it is a a sad state of affairs, you know, you want it to be inclusive, you want people to attend, it's free, it's open. But yeah, you just don't get that level of attendance from a female perspective. Yeah, so whilst whilst you was doing um, do, doing these um this speaking events, kind of what's been your your highlights and kind of what's your um your goals with it? Um with the meetup? Yeah. Um, so at the beginning, it was um, a SharePoint meetup. So there were only SharePoint to topics around SharePoint. And believe me, you can talk a lot about SharePoint. Um, and so I think three, uh, two years ago, um, I renamed the meetup Microsoft Collaboration Meetup. So it's just around collaboration topics. And um, so we're discussing different topics. I don't want to focus too much on Teams because there is also another meetup for Teams that is specialized on Teams. But of course, we also talk about Teams, about SharePoint, um, Power Platform. So the next meetup is about uh, governance, Power Platform, but also M365. Um, and most of the time I just have a topic, for example, security or um, user interface or just one product. And yeah, so there are different topics and also sometimes different listeners. And you've also and done different it. events like Collapse Days, SharePoint Saturdays and, and other events as well, haven't you? Um, yeah, right. So um, we've done the SharePoint Saturday. Now it's the collab days, but um, two years ago it's, it was still a SharePoint Saturday or SharePoint and Office 365 Saturday. Yeah. Um, I think that, that was the biggest event I've um, I've co-organized. We had about uh, 400 attendees, and it was at uh, Microsoft headquarters in Munich. Um, a community event on a nice Saturday. Um, yeah, so. That was really cool um, yeah. and it was the biggest one. So last year we continued the event, but yeah, online. <laughs> so out of interest, obviously, you know, I've, I've organized you know, a conference. How did you find it? What, what kind of like pressure and, you know, 
how much you drive you insane like what point you want to pull your hair out because mm -hmm. getting information from people your speakers yeah. making sure everything's running smoothly and i know for me it was an absolute nightmare because the venue i had was like across like three floors and it was just basically mm -hmm. start trying to herd sheep downstairs and knowing where people that to go how, how did you find that so <laughs> I, to be honest, I loved to do it. Uh, so and almost for the on-site event, the online events are okay, and I was also not so nervous and not so many so much preparation. But the on-site event, um, that one with four hundred people, I, I really loved to do it. And I also was um, I was doing all the sponsorship stuff. That was a little bit stressing because sometimes it's not so easy to um, make every sponsor happy. But on the other side, I don't know, it was like, um, yeah, we all we had all the time before the event and during the event, that kind of adrenaline that pushed up high. And um, I don't know, and everything went well. We also, um, um, yeah, we had uh, great speakers. So, um, the event was in English. We had uh, Omar Shaheen as a keynote speaker, and yeah, it was a really cool event and also after event. So and I say like keeping the sponsors happy is obviously is the key thing. And I know what I basically did with my event is basically force every attendee to walk through where the speaker or the, or the sponsors were, just to get their food, their tea, their coffee. So that way, every single sponsor got the same footfall. Obviously, not in every venue you can do that, but it's just my way of trying to keep my sponsors happy at the time. It's, it, mm -hmm. it is hard work. And I say, yeah, on the, on the day, you know, you're running high and, you know, you're flying, you're basically, you know, you, you've got that buzz. I mean, I actually delivered um, the morning opening like, keynote with another speaker and I was quite hungover from the night before because um, we basically had like a, a a curry night and we basically had a, a, a pub quiz and the beer was just basically flowing because one of the sponsors put money behind the bar and it was just a free bar and yeah i was kind of worse for wear in the morning and there is actually like a youtube video on the one for um is it 365 live when I'm, i look quite worse for wear but i, I it is it's, it's a great feeling you know I, I understand exactly how you feel it's mm. putting on something that that big and on that scale the, pr the stress and pressure getting it to that point is you know high but then as soon as you've basically done it you know you've got that that buzz and you've got that little you know that memory for yourself as well mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's true um, so what would you say kind of your is like what why do you love what what do you do you love about the community kind of um what what, what does it bring to you um like personally um yeah so it, it brings a lot um of course um the people because you meet a lot of people and um, you can talk about uh, with people about um, professional topics, about M365 topics, about personal topics. You find friends and um, I think it's a much more nicer and better way of uh, work if you know people and you, yeah, you can help people and you can get help from others. Yeah, yeah and why not learn from each other it's so easy 100 <laughs> percent. so one of the things obviously you know this podcast is focused on is the like the women in tech community do you have anything kind of similar in germany i know there's quite a few initiatives globally and in the uk but is there anything in the in the german region or um so there are some communities and not uh, not in m365 so i there isn't a community in germany and m365 community or uh teams community um now it's uh, um the teams community um from lorry but of course it's not in germany it's international um so yeah that's to be honest there's not a dedicated uh, community here seems like, seems like there's a gap in the market there to, to <laughs> set something up um uh, yeah i will think about it and on the other side so it's it's good and it's important on the other side in, in my opinion generally it's more important to start earlier um so to start um yeah i don't know 
Um, for example, we have an, now an initiative to go on, on schools and talk about uh, our uh, work experience uh, to girls that just um, try to orientate themselves. So girls which are about 14, 15 years old, they still don't know what they want to do. And, you know, if, if you don't have any idea, OK, IT, it sounds technical. I don't want to hear about it. But if you hear another girl, another woman talk about it, um, maybe it's much more easier to convince girls from yeah uh, from an early age. So what, what would be your what would be your advice and what would you say to that 40, 14 year old girl as like someone who's obviously quite established um, within within the um, the IT industry? So I think the first advice uh, would be that um, being in IT it doesn't mean that it has to be very technical. It can be very technical, it can be technical, or it can be less technical. So you you have a wide area of work and you, you can decide what you want to do. And um, you have a lot of opportunities. Um, the IT world develops very fast. And yeah, it's also for, for the future. Yeah, you have a secured future, you have a good job. And yeah, I think. That's the thing about seeing it. People think about it like, you know, you're a geek, you're a nerd, you're basically fixed computers, you're there, you know, <laughs> in like long johns and long slippers and just basically look, you know, just, you know, like a proper geek. But in reality, you know, people in IT are kind of on normal people and, you know, everyone's from their own different backgrounds. And as we go through life, you know, we'll meet others in IT that, you know, will come from a different background to us who have a, an interesting story. And it's just, IT isn't just for that one person who is good at IT. It can, it can go down so many different avenues, as you mentioned. I mean, when I started in IT, I, I went down desktop support. I went into telecoms. And I, went, I went into then proper like networking, but I ended up falling back into Microsoft and 365. So yeah, IT is open to everyone. I say so you're if you're from a SharePoint background. So as me and John are from around a similar kind of background around uh, you know on-premise to M365. Um, yeah, IT is available to everyone and you know it, mm. I think it is important to get into schools and talk to girls at a younger age and how they can basically use technology and set up a career for themselves I mean I know with my own stepdaughter and I mentioned before she started using Microsoft Teams this year because of Covid so I had to basically sit there with her show her how it's all used actually got got a laptop out rebuilt it all set it all up so she can literally you know connect to all her OneDrive stuff how to pin stuff to um, her SharePoint sites, use Office Lens to take pictures of the work that she's done so she can send it to the teacher. And, you know, I think with COVID, it's kind of helped put the spotlight more on um, what's available to everyone in general in IT and how we can all work from a collaborative perspective while not even being in a, an office or at a school and really pushing forward technology as a, as a you know, a solution to you know, life's challenges. And I just, I just hope that, you know, as life goes on, there'll be more courses and accessibility for, you know, kids at a younger age to start using IT to the to the degree that we use it. I mean, I say, I've mentioned before, when we was at school, there was no Office 365, there was no licensing for schools. You, you, I never, you didn't have an email address, you, you know, you just basically went to school, you got given a, an RM computer, you did work in Publisher or whatever was available back then and went on from there. I didn't. I didn't even have IT in my secondary school. Really? Or anything. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, Karina, um, the past year, as you, as you know, it's it's been very busy with COVID. Kind of, what 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 events have you been doing over the past year? Um, so I've been done, um, to be honest, uh, many um, events um, because at the beginning I said, OK, let's just apply for some online conferences. Um, and I've got upset, I've got upset, accepted for too many. So I've also done many uh, conferences, for example, the, um, the Virtual Scottish Summit and I've also done uh, the, the past month I've done two uh, online conferences in uh, pow Power Platform online conferences. Um, I've done some Collab Days events, uh, Collab Days uh, Benelux, um, also German events, MS Community, um, but also Collab Days Birmingham. So yeah, there were many. So how do you get prepared for these? I mean, myself, I mean, I'd love to speak at an event, but I, I think I get quite anxious about kind of what content to, to kind of to, to drive and to speak about. 
so yeah how, how do you kind of prepare for that and how do you kind of prepare mm -hmm. for, for subjects and stuff so first, of course, you need to have the idea about you about what you want to speak. And the first step is to to, to think about a topic, um, write the abstract, apply for the session. Um, and when it's to be honest, when I apply for the sessions, of course, I think about the content, what I want to talk about, but I don't start uh, to, to prepare the content because maybe if i um, just apply with a session no one wants to hear about the topic and they are interested in other topics so as soon as i got uh, accepted first time then i start uh, preparing for the session and um, generally it's more in my opinion it's much more interesting to have a demo rich such des sessions so i'm i always have my demo tenant and i'm pushing there a lot of uh, content and then um, setting up some demos with or some workflows um, with some SharePoint use cases because it's much more uh, funnier and more interactive if I'm doing demos in the sessions. And of course, uh, some sessions, uh, I, I'm repeating some sessions on different conferences and then I'm always trying to, to improve um, my speech, but also to improve the content in the session to extend the workflow or stuff like this. I'll say one of the things as well, obviously trying to prepare content prior to submissions. Microsoft moves at such a quick rate, it's obviously hard to keep up at times. I mean, if you look at the Office 365 roadmap, there's so many updates, launches, changes. It's hard to basically have a, a deck that's, you know, going to be ready in a month's time prepared now because there might be some new little tweak that you might put in there. Obviously, Microsoft names Viva, so that's, you know, that's additional things that you can basically throw into a, you know, a topic. So, yeah. It, it, I think when you look at submitting a session, look at that, uh, what you want to talk about, you know, what is your passion, mm -hmm. something that's basically going to make you think, oh, you know, I really like that. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to really get myself involved. I mean, for, for me at the minute, I'm doing a lot of stuff internally with Microsoft Viva. So I'm going to join a Microsoft call later today to basically, you know, start looking at Viva now that interconnect work for, you know, my company Fujitsu. But, you know, it's just having that passion and that drive. So obviously, you know, whatever you think is uh, an interesting topic to you, um, as long as you're passionate about it and you, you fill out that abstract with everything that you want to you know, talk about and discuss, then there's no reason why it won't be accepted. Mm. Yeah, that's true. So I've also had um, the situation um, last week that I've applied with a session. Um, it was about building up an event registration tool and I've applied for the session a couple of months ago. So now I just uh, got a confirmation. OK, we want to uh, to um, accept your session. But now we have an update from Microsoft. Could you please adapt uh, your session, the content? Yeah, with the new webinar functionality, yeah. there are new options. And I didn't knew to, on that time about that. So it's yeah. yeah, kind of funny. So so, so for you also, it's, it's, it's a learning perspective as well, because obviously, you know, you've, you've submitted that session, a new feature has been released, and, and obviously you know, it's kind of forcing you to go and learn about it. So, you know, it's, it's upskilling you as a person. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you then obviously use that within your business as well. Yeah, yeah. True. So who inspires you within the community? There's obviously a lot of um, great women um, within um, the, the, the IT technology. So who inspires mm -hmm. you? Um, so there are a lot of women that inspire me. Um, maybe some of them are um, Tracy Fundership. Um, she inspires me because, um, yeah, I don't know. I love her energy and also that she's um, very active and straightforward if she want to reach something um, she she posts a lot of very useful blogs for end users for sharepoint end users and yeah so i don't know i think um there are a lot of benefits for um, other people about from the things she's doing and another person is also Anne michaels uh, from microsoft um yeah she also inspired me the way she's are talking the way she's uh, promoting things yeah and she's a very also. very very good public speaker yeah i've watched her a few times and she knows how to deliver and that you know that that's a kind of role within microsoft you see her mm -hmm. at, you know ignite and all the other different conferences she's a very good person and a very good keynote speaker um, mm. for microsoft yeah definitely so obviously we talked about the past mm -hmm. we talked about the present so what's the future for karina what, what what's your goals say for the next coming year Hmm. Um, so, um, 
first of all, maybe let's say I've started this year to to run a community in our company to run a, a power platform and Microsoft Teams community. So in this community, we're starting to build up um, showcases, use cases uh, from experiences that we've already made with our customers. Um, and also maybe go a little bit deeper into solution selling topics. And um, that's also what, I, why I, what I'm interested in. in. So, I wanna, uh, so I wanna make business development um, to set up topics, um, to go out to the market with these topics and also build up a vision about um, the uh, solutions and about um, yeah, the consultancy that we are doing in future for our customers. Um, yeah, and to be honest, uh, people management, I think it's not my goal for the next years. I've been doing this also in the past and um, it's not what I want to do. I want to focus more also on the technical topics. Um, yeah, and just follow uh, my motto, motto, do what you love. So if I'm doing what I love, then I can do, uh, get the best out of it. You sound very that's much like me to and life. Andrew there, to be honest. Yeah, it's quite <laughs> motto to have. That's, 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 you know, be passionate about what you're doing. Yeah. You know, everyone, you know, we have one life and, you know, I've got another, oh God, 30 years of working life ahead of me. So it's like, mm. you know, be, just be passionate about what you're doing and obviously then you will achieve great things. Mm. Do you want to so, give us a quick quick um, plug of your blog, if you like? I know you have a really good blog, as I've, I've read for it quite a few times on our topics and stuff. Do you want to give us a quick, quick um, plug on your, on your blog? Um, yes. Um, so I started a blog um, last year in autumn. Um, and the idea of the blog is to have uh, groups of topics um, and also combine it with uh, cakes, with some cake receipts. And um, so I've already uh, written two groups of topics. The first group um, focusing on uh, SharePoint, uh, SharePoint UI, and the third group of topics um, focusing on uh, Microsoft Teams and SharePoint, SharePoint Hacks in Microsoft Teams. Um, and um, this um, uh, blog, of course, I'm, I will continue with new groups of topics and also new receipts uh, with nice cakes okay so the final word for this episode um so for someone basically if you're not listening to this podcast what advice would you offer who um it's a good question isn't it <laughs> <laughs> put you on the spot there um yeah so my advice is to um yeah first of all do what you love like i've said because uh, it's it's the best way to achieve because if you are doing things you don't love and you don't like um you will just do them because you need to do them and not because uh, you want it and um and generally if you have an idea about anything, uh, starting a community, starting a meetup, doing something in a company you're working for, just try to do it. Go to the CEO and uh, present your idea, start a meetup, talk to some people, just uh, do it. Yeah. yeah basically, basically put yourself out there, be confident and, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it'll only drive confidence in yourself and success. Yeah. Okay. Cool then. Thank you very much. Thank you as well. That's really good. Yeah, really, really good to have, um, having you on the, on the podcast, Karina. Thank you. And thanks for inviting me. So, yeah, thank you for um, for listening to the episode three of the Microsoft Spotlight um, podcast with me, John Jarvis, Andrew Price and um, Karina Linz. Um, thank you for, for, for listening and um, we'll see you next time on episode four. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to the Microsoft Spotlight podcast. Please make sure you hit that like, share and subscribe button to help us promote our message. You can also follow us on Twitter at MSFT Spotlight and we're also on LinkedIn, the Microsoft Spotlight podcast. And finally, we'd like to tell you a little bit about Big Titan and thank them for sponsoring this podcast. Remote migrations start here. Let MigrationWiz do the work for you. It's fast, secure and 100% SaaS, which means you can migrate at any time and from anywhere. Migrate mailboxes, documents, public folders, personal archives, or even Microsoft Teams with just a few clicks. No special training needed and no customer downtime. When the work matters, choose MigrationWiz.